Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's September 27th, and this is the BAM Municipal Weekly Update. This week, the bond buyer held its annual California Public Finance Conference in San Francisco and attracted about 800 municipal professionals. That's the largest annual gathering of people in the muni market every year. And during the event, Brian Babler, BAM's head of primary and secondary market pricing, had the opportunity to talk with Glenn McGowan, negotiated underwriter for RBC Capital Markets, about the outlook for municipal bond demand going forward to the rest of the year. We'll have that interview in just a moment but first a quick recap of activity in the markets this week. Interest rates generally trended down this week, but municipal volume was a little bit lighter than recent weeks, hitting right about the average of $7.5 billion. BAM insured about $112 million of primary market new issues this week, led by the Colliers Hill Metropolitan District number one transaction just north of Denver. Looking ahead to next week, volume is expected to increase somewhat. IPRIO is forecasting new issue municipal volume at about $9.5 billion. BAM is expecting to insure about $250 million of that, including a $44 million transaction for the Coachella Valley Unified School District in California that will be priced by Raymond James & Associates. Uh, like many of the transactions on next week's calendar, that transaction is a taxable advance for funding, and so it is sensitive to volatility and interest rates, which may change the overall volume picture. We'll watch that over the coming week and give you an update in next week's weekly update. And now, let's head off to the interview between Brian and Glenn. Hi, I'm Brian Babler from Build America Mutual. We're here at the 2019 California Bond Buyer Conference. I'm here with Glenn McGowan, a director at RBC on the Municipal uh, Negotiated Underwriting Desk. Glenn, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Glenn just finished up a live uh, survey market panel discussion. Uh, Glenn, any insights or thoughts you want to share from, uh, for, from the panel? Sure. You know, I think there are a number of interesting topics that are coming out of the panel uh, and the discussion that we just had. Certainly one of them is the path of interest rates. Very, uh, you know, tricky question to answer. I don't think anybody really came into this year expecting for rates to drop before 400 basis points, which they have. Uh, and really the question then becomes, uh, you know, given the global landscape, decelerating global growth, you know, parts of uh, Europe and Asia slipping a little bit closer to recession. What does that mean here on the home front? And I think RBC's view has generally been that uh, we have a strong economy in the U.S. powered by a resilient consumer, uh, but the significant divergence in interest rates in foreign markets versus, versus the United States probably puts a little bit of a cap on, uh, on how high our rates can go from here. Interesting that we've seen anywhere between about 13 and $17 trillion globally of negative interest rate instruments. And so I think for investors who want to earn a positive return, dollar-denominated fixed income assets really are the, uh, the bonds that they need to own. And I think you'll probably start to see more and more crossover investors into the municipal market as a result. So that was certainly one uh, interesting uh, uh, topic. Uh, other topics included things like cybersecurity and uh, environmental sustainability. You know, and I think from the uh, sustainability perspective, uh, you know, where the asset class that is likely going to probably, um, you know, shoulder the responsibility of financing a lot of these projects and the initiatives that uh, result from them. And so, uh, to date, we haven't seen a huge divergence in terms of pricing between green and non-green bonds, uh, but certainly the investor interest in the uh, topic continues to grow. It's interesting to note that in the corporate bond market globally, the IG market globally, year to date there's about 140 billion of uh, ESG and or green bonds that have been issued. And I think uh, another panelist noted there are now 22 fixed income ETFs focused on ESG and green. So I think that's going to be another topic that we'll uh, see develop as time goes on. Uh, but we're better to discuss it than Cal Bonbar. That's, right. that's a great point. Uh, as it relates to the market uh, environment with interest rates continuing to be exceptionally low, uh, where do you think that puts us for uh, fourth quarter outlook in terms of muni supply um, and just uh, market conditions in general? Yeah, so another, another good question. I think coming into this year, RBC's uh, strategists were calling for 340 to 350 billion of total issuance. And that would have been kind of the middle of the road type forecast. Uh, right now, we're tracking to about 360, 370 billion, and that's largely on the back of supply that's ticked up in recent weeks. Uh, we're still averaging about 7 billion of new issue supply on a weekly basis, uh, but those week to week numbers have grown in recent weeks, and a lot of that's being powered by refinancing activity. Just as you're seeing in the IG market, year to date, about, 100 and, uh, uh, about 140 billion of supply just in September and a lot of that being taxable refinancings. We're seeing taxable refinancings play a much bigger role in the day-to-day -day, uh, municipal new issue market. So uh, more, uh, more taxable supply on the refunding side driving volume, 
uh, coupled with the seasonal factors where we generally do see an uptick in volume as we uh, you know, sort of make our way through the post-Labor Day uh, stretch, we'll, we'll continue to put uh, some pressure into the market. But in general, our technicals have still been very strong. We've had 37 straight weeks of fund flows that are positive. Um, you know, even with the uptick in supply, I think there's a, a pent-up demand for municipals. The bigger question really is, you know, from a relative performance uh, standpoint, how does our asset class perform relative to treasuries? And I think in recent weeks with the uh, turbulence that we've seen in the treasury market, when the bias toward rates has been higher, as it was two to three weeks ago, that's been a very difficult dynamic for the municipal market, which prices on a static index to, uh, to react to. Uh, but when just last week that um, volatility led to a, a bias toward lower rates, that's obviously a much more hospitable environment for the marketplace. So I think you know, the technicals are strong. We are seeing an uptick in issuance. We'll continue to see more taxable issuance and also seeing more forward uh, advanced refunding transactions price. But I think the, uh, the calendar will continue to grow, but the technicals are strong and hopefully we'll get some stability in rates. But I'll have to knock on wood on that one. Great. Thanks. Yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see a strong end to the year and uh, close out 2019 on solid footing for the muni market. Absolutely. Great. Thanks very much, Glenn. Thank you again. And uh, look forward to seeing you with more commentary from the Cal Bond Buyer. Thanks for having me.